F.J. Wilson. Give him a hand clap. Give God a hand clap as he comes. Amen. God bless you and good morning those who are here in this sanctuary and those who are viewing and hearing me around the world. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's anointing in this place and I trust you can sense the anointing of God with you wherever you are and viewing perhaps in the hospital bed. Amen over in other countries and even in America there's much trouble going on around us but we can find in him peace and we come we come to worship him we come to enter to this gate with thanksgiving and this courts with praise we enter we enter to worship and trust we can leave here to serve and be a witness to somebody how good and how wonderful God is. Has God been good to you? You have, you have to know that and uh, to be a living sacrifice, living witness about him those that go down in the grave, those who are stuck in the corridor of the grave cannot praise him. It takes living folk. It takes people to know how to use their mouths. Open your mouths and know how to praise him. It's been said, and I agree with that, that closed mouths puts a restriction on God as released to you what you ask God for. Must use your mouth and ask him. Must use your mouths and praise him. David, in his approach to Ziglag, a city, uh, Ziglag, based on etymology means the place of overwhelming despair. Zigzag, zigzag according to etymology means the place of overwhelming despair. What do you mean? They were going home, David and his army. We're going back to zigzag and just going towards it. They saw the cities of uh, not on fire, but smoldering and smoke as they reach, reaching towards Ziglag. And uh, the men, 400 brave uh, fighting men, they were crying. They were crying. And David opposed to cry. He caught himself and asked the Lord about the city because they had taken their wives and children with them and left behind them the city that was smoking or smoldering. And David asked the Lord about what to do next rather than cry, what to do next. And God told him, you shall, over, you shall overcome, overtake, and recover all. And so God wants us to know that we ought to praise him at any time. And so based on that victory, what happened, David picked up his pen and he wrote Psalm 34 and said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Never allow the devil to shackle your hands being lifted. Don't allow Satan to close your mouth. Ask not to praise. Praise is just something for us. 
And the Bible declares that God himself will inhabit the praises of men or his people. Are you hearing that? And that's something to learn. I ain't gonna praise him today. You're cheating your own self. You're tying up your own self as not to receive what God has for. I will bless the Lord at all time. And his praise shall what? Be in my mouth. He said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear the Lord and be glad. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with And let us exalt his name together. Can we take our hands, open your mouth and give God some praise? Come on, do it. Hallelujah. And we thank God. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. So nice to see you here in the house of God this morning in Jesus' name. And I want you to get your Bible in your hand. Turn with me, and you're praying for me. Amen. We're not the only ones that need this word this morning. There are people I trust viewing and desiring to hear from God. And the Bible declares that God's word will not go out of his mouth void, but that his word will accomplish what he pleased, and it will prosper in the thing wherever it's going now. It will prosper in the thing where to or wherewith he shall send it. God, I love you. And so we're looking at the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And we are reading from verse 1 down to verse 5. Verse 5. From the book of Genesis. Or it's called the book of Genesis. Book of beginnings. Not just beginning, but the book of beginnings. Book of beginnings. Wait for me. I'm yet turning the pages, and, but stay with me anyhow. We are blessed of the Lord this morning. However, whatever your week has been, you're still blessed. You're just, you're yet blessed. And so it reads, and you, you are familiar with the book of Genesis, and, and I know this chapter in particular, it says so much. We miss some things. Uh, that Moses is saying, they give credit to Moses as a writer of the book of Genesis, not just Genesis, but the first five books of the Bible uh, are credited to Moses to write him. Yes. It says, in the beginning, Genesis, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, verse 3, verse 3, there might be something there that starts a whole new verse, a new word. He's saying something different in verse 3. Let me just take my time. Can, can I just cheat? 
Can I remind you of some things that we've seen before, how great God is, and God Elohim, Elohim is a name given to God in the book of Genesis, Elohim, I'll say this, it might get a fighter argument, Elohim is pluralistic for God himself, but there is only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is in the beginning, Elohim, or God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Would you pray for me? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Verse 3. Uh, says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. Say, light is good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light, called, and God called the light day. In the darkness he called night. I have a second verse to read. I'm going back to this first subject scripture. Go with me and, and, and stay with me and, and let's go to the book of Psalm, Psalm 119. and verse 105. We love the scripture. I know we have set the scripture to memory because it's important for us. It's a verse we should never forget. We live this. We live this. We walk in this. Bible declares, for in him we live and move and have our being. We, we exist because of him. Is that right? Yeah, each day we wake up in the morning, we dare not make a move until we have consulted with the one that has our life. I feel like preaching here. Are you, are you going to pray with me? Uh, uh, the fact that we can inhale and exhale you got to know that's because of God never get an attitude in the morning just thank God for breath that's in your body those right now in the hospital on ventilation they're helping them to breathe we don't need that this morning we can breathe on our own there is, a, there is a, a Greek word uh, for breath that's called theopneusis. It happens based on God's scripture, theopneusis, that it means God breathe, that God breathe in us. When the scripture we read gives us breath or life based on every given day that you are above ground, you ought to thank God. L let me read this scripture. Psalm 119 and verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God gave me this subject matter. He really did. That's entitled that he is able to flip the switch. Say, so God is able. I'm glad you can speak to your mass. Wonderful. That God is able to flip 
the switch. Elder Fossum, I'm looking in your direction to say to you and others here that God is able to flip the switch. We said in time past how God operates. God is a God of the suddenly. God is a God of the uh, He's a God of the meanwhile. Then God, this morning, that talked to you, he's a God that can flip the switch. All right, yes. That word flip, and I'm going to get back to Genesis chapter 1 from verses 1 down to verse 5. From verse 1 to verse 3 in particular, you can see what God has done in just three verses. If you know, you know that, we go back there to that verse again. That word flip means to reverse or to overturn quickly and effortless. Different things that God can do based on life. I'm gonna let these, I'm gonna let these notes go here and just ask God. Uh, these light switches you see around the room in various places, they're there for a reason. Basically, they are accessible to flip the light, to flip darkness into light just by means of flipping them switching them, you find out that the darkness that could have been here, it, the darkness goes somewhere. Once you flip on that switch, the darkness, we don't know where it goes in the closet, but that darkness that was there is removed. Is that right? Yeah. And so that switch, or oh, that device is used to break open an electrical circuit or to divert current from one conductor to another. I need some help in here. It's much more than that. The total source of power for the sanctuary comes from a greater source. There's a power plant that produces electricity somewhere at the edge of this city. Do you not know, I feel God, where your spiritual power comes from? Never forget where your spiritual power comes from. Who gives you power? Do you, do you know that? Yes. Power based on every circumstance. Power that supersedes every natural power. He's light in the dark place. Why are you going to make me forced to preach here this morning? I'm, I'm going to ignore you and just give me, a, give me a grunt every now and then. Just make a grunt. All right. We serve a God who is omnipotent, having unlimited or universal power. He has authority and force. Can we talk about God? Because it seems as though when trouble comes, uh, we seem we have a tendency to magnify the trouble and minimize the power of God. There's a, there's a power of his being. There's a power of his being that he is the quality or state of his existence. He's not seen, but seen, but yet seen and operating in many things. Is that right? He's the power that works in us. 
Yes. Oh, good. Let, me, let me go back to, uh, 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 go forward again, uh, based on uh, Genesis chapter 1, and, and based on the fact that he's like what God can do, what God can do, amen, based, based on dark, bleak, obscure situations. He's always been that way. He will always be that way. He knows how to work in dark situations. God, I love you here. He knows how to turn your midnights into day. It says here, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, that sounds strange, but listen, God himself, he preceded the beginning. Is it in the beginning? Beginning takes, uh, be beginning includes time. But God pre-existed time. For God is eternal. Say eternal. We look at, we look at eternal, it's like a circle. And there's no break in the circle. And so he has no, he has no end and no beginning. God has no father. God has no one to create him. He's always existed. Uh, here's something to learn. Let me just teach this morning. Uh, there's, there's eternity that, that, uh, that's based on God. And then you and I, we have a beginning, but an end. We have a beginning Put a line there, and we have an end. And at the end, you and I, based on our life, based on being born again, and we have it on the inside of us right now. The eternal God lives on the inside of you. Are you still here? But men without Christ have a beginning but an end. You are born again and the God lives on the inside of you. We have a beginning, but we will experience eternity. Well, prove that. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish, be totally lost forever, should not perish, not to experience hell or Gehenna, but have everlasting. When you receive Christ, God put on the inside like he is, eternity. Are, are you hearing me? So we thank God for who he is, what he's done for us. Uh, you're going to have to forgive me here, but listen. If you look at, look at St. John uh, chapter 14, uh, I believe that God, when God was here, he secured some, some things for you. You who have never experienced heaven. Man did not come out of heaven. Stop telling folk that. Man did not come out of heaven. Man was created from the dust of the earth. But Jesus so fit in his wisdom to have you with him, he made a place for you in heaven where you never have been. Can I, can I preach like this? And so in St. John, I'm going there. I feel, like Fred, I feel like Fred Price here, but we're going to get some word just to remind us to, so God can encourage you on how to behave yourself because we're living 
in times of trouble. And sometimes trouble wants to hit you. It wants to weaken you and to make you think different as though, like the world says, or the atheist, there is no God. That devil is a liar. As to say, God, where are you? He's as, as close to you as the nose on your face. He's the one that lives and dwells in your heart by faith. And so we can't allow things to persuade us different. St. John, I'm still going there, chapter 14. Thank you, sir. No. The scripture will say, in my father's house. Is that St. John chapter 15? Yeah, I'm looking at I'm, I had the right chapter. I spoke the right chapter. Listen what the Lord did. For you, based on a place you never came from, never been. He said, in my father's house. No. Let's look at verse Verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You hear that? And our hearts oft time are troubled to the extent we can't sleep at night. Oft time with trouble based on not just ourselves, our loved ones. Based on the atmosphere, your, your home, your house environment. Based on the doctor's report, a heart, our hearts get troubled. This is not your final place. Believe them, my brother and sister, God has gone to a secure place where you've never been. It's the place God, I love you. Where the wicked will cease from troubling and the worry shall be at rest. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Many, not just a house. Not just a three one bedroom. He said, many mansions. You hear that? If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He said that in the hearing of his disciples. It's written in red. It's going to happen. Now, I know, you, I know you like your home now. Your grass is green, you cut, and all that. I know that you got it looking wonderful on the inside, and, and you prize your house. Come in and come in, have a seat. I know you prize your house right now. Ha hello. Yeah, but God has something far greater than your house. He's going to give it to you at the flip of a switch. If this, if this earthly house of this tablet would dissolve, we have a building of God not made with hands that is eternal in the heavens. Hello, hello. He's going to give unto us a new body and then to experience heaven. Now, I believe that's true. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. It don't have to be the rapture. God has given us individual raptures. You lost some loved ones. Do you know where they're at? Some of them, some of them live a godly life in this present world. Now they are present with God. 
Can I, can I preach like this this morning? Yeah. And so God does, God does something. If God be for you, who can be against you? So I'm, I'm speaking God's word this morning. I feel like running. Eyes to and caught with you. We're going back to the book of Genesis. Now I'm going to take my time and near part two would do that. Some word you hear, you miss it. Some word that God speaks, you know, through people, you need to hear it. Because we have not seen tomorrow. Tomorrow is ahead of us. But God's always give a word that's prophetic, that's based on your tomorrow. And your tomorrow based on hearing today, though it seems distant, God can prepare you for your tomorrow. Not, not get there, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. And so what hap something happened here between verse 2. And then verse 3, that you need to hear. Are you still here? Here, verse 2. I'm out of my notes right now. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What happened between verse 1 and verse 3? Something happened in verse 2. Not totally understood based on different schools of theologies. It's believed between uh, verse 2 and verse 3, I could say it and three words, the lights went out. <laughs> and the earth without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Are you, are you still here? Well, what happened? What happened? It's believed, uh, based on verse 1 in God's creation, something happened in verse 2. Based on God's creation, he started in verse 1. But what happened is believe that between, in verse 2, between verse 1 and 2, the angel Lucifer and his, some angels were kicked out of heaven. Because Lucifer, like some folk, got beside themselves. He made a statement that God heard, God hears everything. He said, in essence, I, I can rule heaven. I, I can be like God. Well, God said, what? There's only one God that rules heaven. And, 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 and that's me. Do you all hear him? And God kicked him out. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Don't let people flatter you. When he said, I can move heaven, he said, his angel, you know, I, I can see that in you. I, I can see you doing that. I can see you do. And see, so he gathered some followers based on pride being lifted up in him and news hit heaven and God said Michael get rid of him quick and he was strung out of heaven quick fast and in a hurry and even in his descent mountains turned upside down something happened on root, and the earth was without void, form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, here, verse 3 And God said, And God said, Let there be light. 
what happened is though he just flipped back on the switch and kept on creating. And God, God, God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. I, I like to always question what God does. Why does he do what he does in, in life? If you look at, if you look at, let me take my time so you can get the essence and the meat of this teaching and really understand the book and the, the, the value, the value of your Bible, the value of your Bible beyond every book you may have in your library. This is the book to go to. In 1 John, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, it speaks about God. About God. I did read it and deal with it. John said that God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So God detests darkness. God is the light. God is light. He illuminates. He, he brightens up. He dispels every dark place. Even in our lives, if we allow him, he will dispel every dark place. You allow him. Yeah. That all time you sense in you, you can sense in you a voidness, and there's a need. So God brightens up. He illuminates conditions and, and, and people. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Say, Jesus, Jesus. is the light of life. We have to, we have to, we have to know them. I'm going to just say some things here. How's my time doing? Thank you so much. Yeah. The light that God has and is, is defined in the Hebrew language as one word, or, which is, I said, to give light, as to brighten, or to brighten up. Here it is. Some things that seem uh, uh, not clear to us, both naturally and spiritually. The word light means to make clear. There's some things you look in God's word are not clear to you as yet. Is that right? And so God must allow you to see. Uh, like he sees. And some folk here, you, you wear glasses. Where's your hand? You wear glasses. And, and you know, and you, and you know. They're not for fashion. You know as big as they are, I need these big glasses on my head. You know they're not designed just for fashion and looking good. You know, just like taking your wallet. I, ho I, hold on, hold on. Be right there. Where you going? I must get my glasses. Hello. So I can see clearly where I'm going. It is important that you see clear where you're going. Right. Not to mention at night. Some folk have stopped driving at night, glasses or not. Because you just can't take a chance riding at night because it, it, it seems it, you see people as trees. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not, I'm not, see, I'm talking about on experience now. So I'm not making no joke in light of this. Uh, that yellow line, unless you see a yellow line in the road, you'll get off course. Can I get a witness here? See, wait, put your hand up in the air like you're telling the truth. Yeah, come on, see? Yeah, that yellow line, thank God for the highway. If I can make the highway, I'm cool. I'm cool. But uh, you find your vision uh, defective at night, opposed to day. And so you appreciate the day opposed to the night. Let me go on and preach in this. Let me just go. Have, have you ever, have you ever at every age, young age and old age, you were traveling, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. You were traveling perhaps from Boston to New Jersey or to New York. And in your driving, you hit an area, a real thick, foggy area. I know I'm in the right place. And as though it was so dense, based on the fog, you slowed way down. And you had to almost feel your way to that fog. But it, it seems as though this is a, a pocket of fog. And you wrote out the fog. And we're back to another area that's foggy again. But you took your time. But can you understand how important your vision and having light? Able to see while you're driving? But off time, off time in life, you find yourself feeling your way through to get to where you want to go. If I had me a church in here this morning, book of Acts chapter, I think in, in chapter 27, it says how the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. When you can't, when you can't feel God, you have to sense him. You find yourself uh, something on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit, your own spirit, it feels after God. And so God has to teach us even how to pray. It's not based on emotion. What you're feeling cannot feel. We are for to operate based on coming here uh, on the B3 organ. Brother Dave, Deacon Dave, on the organ that moves him and that's needed we ought to praise him in the dance and on a high sound and symbol but really the emotion really can't sense after god we ought to praise him but my brother and my sister you're going to know how at times you feel hard after god if happily you can find him based on the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. He is the light that's in your body. Are you still here? And I told you that, that God is light. He's just the opposite of darkness. I just heard God say, what we do basically at night? What do we do basically at night? We sleep. Is that right? Yeah, we are the children of the day and not of night. Even if you, even at you, if you work at night, your, your, your whole body is out of order. Your whole body is out of order because God made your body so you can rest at night. Come on. And to appreciate the day because you are the children of light. You need light. You, you just need light. I'm skipping and missing, but I, I'll be all right. The Greek word for light is false. Jesus said something of extreme importance to mankind and particularly to believers. He said, and catch this, 
catch this and embrace this because really you cannot live without him because he's light. I am the light of the world. Don't you know this world needs a light? Do you not know this world needs light because it, it dwells in darkness? And men love darkness, oppose the light. Why is that? Because their deeds are evil. I'm, I'm going to go back in the street. I'm going to go back 55 uh -oh, years or more. Did we, did we call, yes, you recall. Did we call the house parties back in the day? Raise your hand. Y'all are lying. Well, I, know some, I, was, I was raised in the church all of my life. Wonderful understanding. I was raised in church. But who remembers the house parties? Who remembers the, the slow jams? Uh, yeah. He's trying to touch the ceiling there. Yeah. Yeah. They would turn the lights out for... I ain't cutting up. Let me stay here a little bit. Huh? Cut them off in the house parties so we could do little mischievous things. I'm, I quit right there. Is that right? Because men and women love darkness more than light and will not come to the light except their deeds be reproved. That they be, might be manifest in God. God knows how to prove us. God knows how to correct us based on the things we do in darkness. People avoid church because they know God expects more out of them based on their behavior. If I had me a church, I, I came that way. I, I came the Bible way. I came the convicted way. And even today, they would come but just leave me alone while I'm here. But God has a way to allow the light to show up everything that's going on in our lives. If I had me a church in here, hmm, yeah, yes, sir. It, it's what God gives to us. It light, that God gives light, it brightens all to brighten up. To make clear, he, he, he is to us the daylight. He is as the morning. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. He's the bright and morning star. And I said the Greek word for light is false. Hmm. He told us who are here, I am the light of the world. And he who believes in me shall not walk in darkness. But you have the light of life. Because God gives light. And we are no longer the children of darkness. Or night. I'm going to move on. Yes. In the book of Exodus chapter 13. And verse 22, it says, based on how God dealt with the Israelites, like God wants to deal with us today. He took away the pillar of, he took not away, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. He knows how to lead us. People without light and life of God in him or her is like what Job said in Job chapter 12 and verse 25. Job said in regard the people that don't have the light. He said they grope in the dark without light. Someone needs to know that God is able to deliver them from the power of darkness and can translate them 
at the flip of a switch into the kingdom of God's dead son. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 13, it says that God has, the God has, who can translate by delivering men from the power of that. Only God can do this. For there is the kingdom of darkness that one can escape. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 10 says this, and his kingdom was full of darkness. Satan's kingdom is full of darkness. It's designed to hold you. It's designed to keep you. It's designed to keep your natural eyes and the eyes of your spirit captive. Though you can't see your way out. But Jesus is the light of the world. Ever shining or, or wants to shine as you hear me uh, uh, based on this YouTube. Wherever you are this afternoon, he's a lamp lighter. He can light up your soul. He can, I'm sorry, light up your pathway. And that's what we need today. That's what the world needs. For the world lieth. <laughs> The world dwelleth in darkness, but Jesus is searching men and women who are tied to the dark and tied to their past to bring them out of darkness. He can search the light of life in their direction and tell them, come on out of that place in the name of Jesus. In the book of Psalm 119, and I feel God in here. I'm hearing God speaking here, there, and everywhere. There's somebody that's living in their past. There's somebody that God can be a lamp lighter. It says in Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Stay with me. I know it. It says, uh, David said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What do you mean? What do you mean, David? While I'm walking at night, his word uh, will guide me in the darkness situation. Word uh, comes to help me uh, while going uh, to my dark places. Uh, and the Bible declares, uh, Yea, do I walk through the valley uh, and the shadow of death? Uh, I will fear no evil. Uh, sometime uh, in your life, uh, you go through uh, valleys uh, that seem so dark. Uh, and God is not near. You got to know in the dark places. He's become to me a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What are you saying? He lights up my way so I can see even dark places. Some things I don't understand. But God, one thing I know, uh, that God is with me uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, he's with me uh, in the turbulence. Uh, he's with me uh, in tribulation. Uh, he's with me uh, in my sicknesses. Uh, he's with me uh, on a bright day. Uh, he's with me uh, on a rainy day. Uh, he lights up my plan. Uh, what is asking? And you flip on the switch uh, and turn the midnight of my life uh, in my condition. He will turn it. If you turn it. 
turn my situation and it turn my condition into day. He's the daybreak. He's, midst, he's with me in the midst of the darkness of my midnights. We have some midnights. In your midnight, don't make a drastic move. Because he's the bright and morning star. You ever ask yourself, when you experience the night, a night season, Roll over a few times, you see that you see it even at midnight in your life, it natural, it changes. And the break comes. And that darkness goes somewhere. He dispels spiritual darkness and midnights in your life. I need you to hear me this morning. Because he called the darkness night. He called the light day. Is that right? And we experience it every night we go through that. Now on the flip side, the spiritual side, we're going to have some midnights. If you have to cry, wait for the morning. Hello. Yet wait, don't do nothing contrary to God. Wait for your daybreak. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Jesus is your morning. I'm going to say that Jesus really, not like the natural son, Jesus is your morning. He, he's more than that. He's known as a son of righteousness. With healing in his wing. To heal you from your midnights. Midnights. They say, now I'm taking my seat. There was a darkness over Egypt so thick they could feel it with their hands. We have not been there as yet in our own lives. With the darkness, what you're going through, it seems so thick. You can feel it with your hands. And we've been in some valley situation. You lost somebody. And it seems as though the darkness was so thick but guess what? The morning came in your life. And you're starting to see like you need to see. The morning always succeeds the midnight. Would you clap your hands in them? I have to move, don't want to move. But just, just where you're sitting, let's, let's at least do this. Because I don't know who's in there and has not been born again. The Lord said, uh, somewhere over there in, somewhere in, uh, St. John, he said, Verily, but I say unto you, he that heareth my word shall not walk in darkness. No, darkness. But it's passed from death unto life. There's a void verse over in St. John. But it's passed from life, but passed from death unto life. The Lord does that. Just by hearing and believing on him, it's passed from death unto life. Like passing from life, from 
death, from darkness to light. God can do that. And you start seeing things as they are. The old folks said that being born again, they looked at my hands and my hands looked look, look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. You know what happens? The light that God placed within, you start seeing things so differently. You look in the mirror and say, oh God, all this extra makeup on my face. I don't need all this. I don't need all this. The Lord knows how to beautify his people with salvation. There's a glory that appears on you that the world does not have. It's just the glory. It is the reflection of God, not just in you, but now on you. It's on your countenance. I got to stop. I'm going to stop. Father, in Jesus' name, those who are in here that need more of you and, and less of themselves, they want the light to radiate in them and out of them. They're not born again. They're not saved as yet. We pray that God even to they come to the light. And you are the light. And God reveal yourself. Give them illumination. illumination. Let them turn from sin and darkness to you. And do a work that's necessary in their life. Those who are watching me around the world you're there with them right now in their homes at their workplace even now even now in that bed in the hospital send your word send your word word of conviction send your word to encourage them right now and god heal them heal some and make up their sick bed Send your word and heal and deliver them from their destruction. Now, let faith take root in them right now to believe you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray even now for Elder Gail's son that God, you would undertake him to that surgery and release him based on the healing power of you and uh, we ask this now in jesus name amen amen i'm moving swiftly i hate to do this i i i want you to stand get your tithe and your offering in your hand and the next three for four minutes, I want you to bring your tithe and put your tithe and offering in this basket. We have two exits to make. Either you can move towards the Wood Ave side and exit, or you can move towards Chapel Road and exit that way. And so let me give you a benediction while I'm doing it. You're moving at the same time. Now unto him who was able, you're moving. Now unto him who was able to keep you or us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever amen god bless you i hope to see you soon